It's Saturday, the 4th of March. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel under some rather austere conditions. We're five days without power. We got three more days minimum before power gets restored into the local area. We've got the Honda generator providing some limited connectivity and a, an old laptop here to try to put this together for you today. But just breaking news today, we've got the critical audio data of the crash, the tragic loss of the air ambulance flight that departed Reno Friday night a week ago and lost control of the aircraft and crashed near Stagecoach, Nevada. This crash has all the ear marks of a loss of control of the aircraft due to spatial disorientation under a single pilot operation. And this audio data corroborates what ear witnesses on the ground have heard and to the trained ear will show you exactly how a in-flight breakup of the aircraft followed the loss of control of the aircraft due to spatial disorientation. Let's check it out. So this audio comes from security camera footage of a driveway camera which was facing towards the direction of the crash located less than a quarter mile away from the crash site. You'll hear the aircraft flying normally overhead and then you'll hear the aircraft begin a turn what sounds like a turn to come back over then you'll hear the increase uh, airspeed and RPM of the engine and then the in-flight breakup of the aircraft. If you witnessed the galloping ghost crash at the Reno National Championship Air Races years ago or reviewed that video, you'll recognize some of these sounds. As the speed begins to increase and build as this aircraft is heading for the ground, approaching and exceeding VNE or the never exceed speed airspeed for the airframe, the propeller RPM begins to increase to a point to where it gets into an overspeed condition. In an overspeed condition, the tips of the propeller begin to break the speed of sound, which gives it that distinctive rapping noise. Now, we don't hear a distinct bang or boom or crack of the airframe breaking apart, but we hear a distinctive change in the tone of the aircraft from a steadily increasing rate of speed to a wow, 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 wow sort of a sound, and that's the sound of a flat spin just prior to impact. 
The engine was operating the whole time. The engine was not sputtering, uh, as was first indicated by some of the initial ear witnesses that got on the uh, news reports early on in this accident. Here's a still picture from the NTSB B-roll that corroborates the flat spin theory the aircraft landed flat like a pancake and there you can see the right outboard portion of the wing missing. In another still picture from the NTSB roll we can see the vertical fin twisted laying on the ground and the elevator and stabilizer missing off of the top of the vertical fin. According to a preliminary report from the NTSB, these parts were found about at least a half a mile to three quarter of a mile away from the airplane, indicating that they broke off of the airplane very late into its descent, but before impact. So whichever failed first will cause this aircraft to change its flight pattern from a screaming power dive to that of a flat spin. So I want to thank anybody, including this homeowner, that got this audio data to the NTSB, anybody that helped provide information to the NTSB, because, again, there was no requirement for this aircraft, and they did not have a cockpit voice recorder nor a data recorder. Hopefully, this will change. Accidents like this, well, the NTSB has been after the FAA for a year to change the regulations to require this sort of data on board these sort of flights. And also, too, I hope that this medical community learns these lessons, these hard lessons. This is four aircraft in, in the recent years here that they've got to start doing things a little more professionally like they do in the airlines and require two pilots on board of these aircraft when flying in these terrible conditions and completely reevaluate the need for such a mission in these terrible blizzard conditions. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks who are on Patreon that make this kind of content possible because this is the kind of stuff that YouTube continuously demonetizes. Thanks for your support. See you here.